Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. I'm Mutsaf Parekh and I'll take you through the top 50 stories of the day. Let's begin. Russian missiles hit residential buildings in, western, uh, in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv on Thursday. At least four people have been killed. Another eight people are injured. Rescue operations are still underway. Officials say some civilians are still trapped under debris. The city's mayor said that over 60 buildings were damaged by the missile strike. Meanwhile, Ukraine's military claimed it hit Russian units in the Russian-controlled Donetsk region. Ukraine released footage of its alleged attack on a Russian ammunition depot. However, Russian-appointed officials in Donetsk said that one civilian was killed in Ukraine's strike. They added that 39 others were also injured. A man killed himself after detonating an explosive device in a court in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. The suspect was charged in connection with the death of four Ukrainian soldiers back in 2015. After the verdict, the suspect locked himself in the court's bathroom. He threw an explosive device at security guards before allegedly blowing himself up. Two soldiers of Ukraine's Rapid Response Force were injured in the blast. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko said Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin was no longer in his country. He said that Prigozhin was now in the Russian city of St. Petersburg. Lukashenko further added that some Wagner mercenaries were still in Belarus. However, he did not clarify whether the Wagner troops will stay in Belarus or return to Russia. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni met her Polish counterpart in Warsaw on Wednesday. The two leaders vowed to commit more support for Ukraine amid Russia's invasion. Meloni said, and I quote, Italy will support Ukraine for as long as necessary. The two leaders also discussed Ukraine's participation in the upcoming NATO summit. NATO will meet next in Lithuania on the 11th of July. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted Sweden's Prime Minister Ulf Christensen at the White House on Wednesday. Biden assured Christensen of his support for Sweden's entry into NATO. Christensen raised the uncertainty over Turkey's approval. Remember, Turkey said it would dismiss Sweden's NATO bid after a Quran was burnt in Stockholm as a form of freedom of speech. Meanwhile, both the leaders also signed pacts for working together on building 5G and 6G networks. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen arrived in China's capital, Beijing, on Thursday. Yellen is on a four-day visit to China as the U.S. looks to ease tensions with Beijing. She's slated to meet her Chinese counterpart, among other senior officials. The visit comes amid rising tensions between the two countries over export controls for chip technology. Hundreds of Palestinian mourners took to the streets of Jenin City in the occupied West Bank on Wednesday. They attended funerals of civilians who were killed by Israeli soldiers during the Jenin Raid. On Monday, Israel launched a two-day military operation in Jenin City. Twelve civilians were killed during the raid. Israel had deployed over a thousand soldiers for the operation. The Israeli army claimed that the raid was conducted to take out a militant command center in Jenin. Meanwhile, thousands of Israelis took to the streets of Tel Aviv on Wednesday. This was after Tel Aviv's police chief resigned. The police chief alleged political intervention by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. He said that Netanyahu demanded that police officers use excessive force against the anti-government protesters. Soon after the police chief's resignation, demonstrators blocked the Tel Aviv highway while chanting, Save our democracy. A suspected gas leak has killed at least 16 people near the city of Johannesburg in South Africa. Government officials claim the gas leak is linked to suspected illegal mining activities. Authorities have cordoned off the area and are investigating the incident.
At least 29 people were killed after a bus fell into a ravine in southern Mexico. Another 19 people were injured in the tragic accident. Mexican officials say the bus crashed after the driver lost control on a sharp turn. This is the second major bus accident in Mexico this year. In April, at least 18 people were killed after a bus fell off a cliff in western Mexico. Guatemala's presidential candidate Bernardo Arevalo said the current government was plotting against him. Arevalo accused the government of trying to remove him from the presidential race. In June, the Central American nation held its presidential election. Last week, the Supreme Court called for a ballot review after voters alleged fraud and irregularities. Arevalo is running against Guatemala's former First Lady, Sandra Torres. Metro workers went on strike in Argentina's capital, Buenos Aires, on Wednesday. They demanded the removal of asbestos from their workplace. They also asked for reduced working hours. According to the workers' union, at least seven metro workers have contracted cancer due to asbestos. Three of the seven have succumbed to cancer. Asbestos is a mineral that is poisonous and has carcinogenic properties. Hong Kong's legislature has, slashed, has passed a law that overhauls voting in the district-level election. Under the new amendment, only 88 seats out of 470 would be directly elected by the voters. Earlier, Hong Kong voters could directly elect officials to 452 seats. Critics say this will further reduce democracy in the China-ruled city. Heavy monsoon rain has caused flash floods in Pakistan's Lahore city. Gushing waters entered homes, damaging some buildings. Officials have deployed rescue teams in the city's low-lying areas. The weather office has issued a warning for more rainfall till Sunday. A rare storm with winds reaching speeds of 145 km per hour hit the Netherlands. At least one person was killed after an uprooted tree crushed a car. Several buildings were also damaged by the storm. Train services were halted in the northern regions of the Netherlands due to the bad weather. Extremely strong winds prompted Amsterdam's airport authorities to cancel almost 400 flights. A heat wave is scorching China's capital Beijing. Temperatures reached 40 degrees Celsius on Wednesday. City officials advised residents to restrict outdoor activity and to cool off with ice cream. China's weather service said temperatures in Beijing were likely to further spike in August. Heat waves are exacerbating climate danger in Latin America. Rising temperatures are causing droughts and wildfires in several South American countries. The heat is also drying up water bodies. Climate observers say that high temperatures are leading to a rise in the demand for electricity. This has caused carbon dioxide emissions in South America to spike to their highest level in 20 years. Scientists warn this will further impact the climate, making it a vicious cycle. Hundreds of farmers staged a tractor-trailer protest in Spain's capital Madrid on Wednesday. They accused the government of not providing adequate funding amid a prolonged drought in the country. The farmers said that this year's drought has severely impacted crop yield. In May, Spain approved a financial package worth $2.4 billion for the farmers. However, the farmers are demanding more aid from the Spanish government. Climate activists from the Just Stop Oil Group interrupted play twice at the Wimbledon Open. This was on Wednesday, which was the third day of the tournament. The protesters threw orange tape mixed with jigsaw puzzles on the grass court. They were detained by security officials amid booing from the audience. After the incident, tennis players Katie Boltier and Daria Saville helped ground staff in picking up the confetti. Meta has launched its Twitter rival Threads in more than a hundred countries. In a post on the new app, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said it had crossed 10 million signups within seven hours. 
According to Meta's policy, users need to have an Instagram account to join the new Conversation app. It also adds that users cannot deactivate their Threads account without deactivating their Instagram account. Meanwhile, Meta has delayed the launch of Threads in the European Union. This is because of regulatory uncertainties concerning its use of personal data. The app collects sensitive user information, including their browsing history, financial and location data. The World Artificial Intelligence Conference 2023 begins today in China's Shanghai city. The event brings together top-notch scientists, entrepreneurs, investors and more. Over 30 new high-tech products including drones and new energy electric vehicles are expected to be launched in the conference. The United Nations' technology agency is organizing a conference in Switzerland this week. It will launch dozens of robots including several humanoid ones at the conference. These robots will help the organization achieve a series of its sustainable development goals. One of them is a social robot who, stimulates emo who simulates emotions and can serve as a caregiver at retirement homes. The number of monthly users visiting OpenAI's ChatGPT likely declined for the first time in June. This is according to online traffic monitor SimilarWeb. Data from the monitor showed ChatGPT's global visits keep slow kept slowing down from its peak in January. If current trends continue, its growth will decline for the first time on a month-on-month -month basis. Canadian media company Quebeco will pull its ads from Facebook and Instagram. This follows Meta Platforms' decision to stop news access across its social media sites in Canada. Meta's decision came after Canada passed the Online News Act. Under the Act, internet companies are required to pay news publishers for carrying their content. Sri Lanka's central bank has cut its key rates by 200 basis points. This is in line with analysts' expectations. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka cut its standing deposit facility rate from 13% to 11%. Meanwhile, it cut its standing lending facility rate from 14% to 12%. Remember, the island nation had plunged into crisis last year after its foreign exchange reserves ran out. The U.S. Commerce Department has said that America opposes the export controls announced by China on some metals. A spokesperson said that the U.S. will consult their partners and allies to address the issue. Earlier this week, China put export controls on gallium and germanium, which are widely used in the semiconductor industry. Reports say PricewaterhouseCoopers Australia provided Google confidential information regarding the country's new tax law. This is the first time a company has been directly linked to the scandal. PwC has been facing scrutiny for its role in leaking confidential information about Australia's tax laws to its corporate clients. Reports say Samsung Electronics' second quarter profit is expected to plunge by 96% year-on-year. This would be the lowest for any quarter in more than 14 years of the company's history. A glut in the chip market continues to drive large losses for the Czech giants tech giant's business. Moving to sports, in cricket, Indian stars Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma have been dropped from the upcoming T20 series against the West Indies. Instead, Tilak Verma and Yashasvi Jaiswal have been included in the squad. This comes after Verma and Jaiswal delivered stellar performances in this year's Indian Premier League. India will play their first T20 match against the West Indies on August 3rd. England's leading wicket-taker James Anderson has been rested for the third Ashes Test. The English side has made a total of three changes to their playing 11 in the must-win game. Australia is leading the five-test Ashes series 2-0. Moyan Ali, Chris Wokes and Mark Wood have found their way to the playing 11. Earlier, England vice-captain Ollie Pope was ruled out of the tournament owing to an injury. 
In football, Brazil's Rio de Janeiro government has named a new anti-racism law after Vinicius Jr. Vinicius was racially abused by fans when Madrid played Valencia in May. The law will see sporting events stopped or suspended in the event of racist misconduct. The Vinny Jr. law includes protocol on how to process complaints of racism and mandatory educational campaigns. French club Paris Saint-Germain has appointed Luis Enrique as their new coach. The 53-year-old will replace Christophe Gaultier. Enrique had been a free agent since being sacked as Spain coach last December. Premier League club Manchester United have signed Mason Mount for a reported fee of $70 million. Mount has moved from Chelsea on a five-year contract with the option of extending it for one more year. The 24-year-old graduated from Chelsea's Youth Academy. He made 129 Premier League appearances and scored 27 goals. In tennis, Novak Djokovic celebrates his 350th win at a Grand Slam by defeating Australia's Jordan Thompson. He now moves to the third round of the Win Wimbledon Championship. The 36-year-old beat the unseeded Australian 6-3, 7-6, Djokovic has now joined Roger Federer and Serena Williams' record of winning 350 matches at Grand Slams. Fifth seed Stefanos Tsitsipas defeated former world number three Dominic Thiem to move into the Wimbledon second round. The 24-year-old Greek beat the Austrian 3-6-7-6-6-2-6-7-7-6. The match took almost four hours and five sets over two days to decide the winner. Tsitsipas will next play two-time Wimbledon champion Andy Murray. World number one Iga Shiontek beat Sara Soribes Tormo 6-2-6-0 to cruise into the Wimbledon third round. The US Open and French Open champion has never been beyond the fourth round of Wimbledon. This is Shiontek's 40th match win of the 2023 season. In the third round, Shiontek will face either French player Diane Parry or Croatia's Petra Martic. In badminton, India's two-time Olympic gold medalist P.V. Sindhu has advanced to the second round of the Canada Open. Sindhu defeated Canada's Talia Yang 21-16-21-9 in the opening round of the tournament. She will next play Japan's Natsuki Nidaria. Meanwhile, India's Lakshya Sen also reached the second round of the Canada Open. He pulled an upset as he stunned world number four, Kunlavut Vititsan of Thailand. Sen beat his Thai opponent 21-18-21-15. He will now face Brazil's Igor Coelho in the next round on Friday. In the world of entertainment, film regulators in the Philippines are threatening to join Vietnam in banning Warner Brothers' much-anticipated movie, Barbie. The film finds itself in the middle of a brewing controversy over a scene that depicts a politically sensitive map of Southeast Asia. On Monday, Vietnam said that it was banning all screenings of the film for showing a map of the so-called Nine Dash Line. Actor Tom Cruise said he hopes to continue making Mission Impossible films into his 80s. The Mission Impossible franchise action star is looking to equal Harrison Ford's record as an action hero. Interestingly, Cruz still famously performs his own stunts in the franchise. The latest installment of the franchise features stunts which are being billed as the most dangerous ones Cruz has ever attempted. The owners of Hollywood's Sunset Studios have put a hold on plans to build a $650 million film production base in the UK's Hertfordshire. The project is reportedly being reviewed in the light of cost inflation and rising interest rates. A delay could take, the project, uh, to take place and the project could start next year, according to suppliers. However, no official statement has been issued on a new schedule. Netflix has teased fans of the show Sex Education 
by releasing a short trailer for the new season. The fourth series of the British teen comedy drama premieres on September 21st. This will also be the final season of the popular series. It follows the lives of students, staff and parents of the fictional Moordale Secondary School. The characters contend with various personal dilemmas often related to sexual intimacy. A documentary film titled My Shiny World is currently in the works for K-pop group Shiny. It will be released in September this year to mark the group's 15th anniversary. The documentary will include never-before-seen content from the group as it outlines their 15-year journey. It seems as though Chance the Rapper is gearing up for a huge comeback. The rapper has come through on Instagram with his most beautiful snippet yet. In the Instagram caption, Chance the Rapper explains how the song is called Deadbeats, although that's simply a working title. The rapper has also confirmed that his upcoming album, Starline Gallery, should be dropping eventually. Rapper Machine Gun Kelly made a fan's dream come true by punching him in the face mid-song. Kelly delivered a left-handed punch to a front row fan during his Saturday show at the 2023 Rock Wester Festival in Belgium. The Forget Me Too singer had posted the now viral video on his Instagram. Fresh media reports are indicating that actor Jamie Foxx is still pretty fragile. The newest update has created deep concern among his fans and followers. The Oscar-winning actor's health update has been reportedly kept under wraps by his family members. Fox was taken to a hospital from the sets of one of his upcoming movies in April due to some quote-unquote medical complications. Memphis rapper Casino Jizzle was shot to death on the 4th of July. This was confirmed by his manager Angie Strange. Memphis police say that the shooting happened around 6.30pm on July 4th and that a man was found dead at the scene. The Memphis rapper was an independent artist and boasts over 46 million views on his music videos. Hong Kong-born American singer Coco Lee died on Wednesday. This was following a suicide attempt that left her in a coma. According to her sisters, Lee died by suicide at home and was tried to commit suicide at home and was sent to the hospital on July 2nd. Lee's career spanned around 30 years. Among her most notable performances was the Oscar-nominated song A Love Before Time from the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post.